And good Monday morning, One Life. Uh, as we refocus on a new day and a new week, uh, we'll waste no time refocusing on what matters most, which leads me right into our devotion this morning. Uh, it's an honor, as always, to introduce this lady here that's going to be with us, Miss Carolyn Jenkins. Uh, she's served One Life in various capacities over her 23-year career here as One Life's longest tenured office, or one of One Life's office uh, longest tenured office staff members. She's been a consistent face and voice uh, that has so warmly welcomed us all these years. Currently, she is the executive assistant to our owner and founder, uh, founder Mr. Ken Parker. So it's quite an honor to have her on the call this morning. Please welcome to the call one of my heroes of the faith uh, that happens to be my aunt, Carolyn Jenkins. Aunt Carolyn. Thank you, Jeff. It's an honor to bring the devotional today. And Good morning to all of you, and I hope you all have a great week. I'm going to read from a book written by Charles Swindoll, one of his devotionals, and it starts out with, What does it mean to be a person after God's own heart? Seems to me it means that you are a person whose life is in harmony with the Lord. What is important to him is important to you. What, is, what burdens him burdens you. When he says go to the right, you go to the right. When he says stop that in your life, you stop it. And when he says this is wrong and I want you to change, you come to terms with it because you have a heart for God. That's bottom line biblical Christianity. And he has, as scripture, Second Peter 1.5, Applying all diligence in your faith supply moral excellence. And personally, I would like to share with you for just a minute how thankful I am that Jesus forgave me of all my sins. He came into my heart and he lives in me. And I know he lives in many of you. And there's no greater joy than walking with the Lord in our hearts and by our sides and with us. He will see us through this life in victory. No matter what comes our way, Jesus is always there. And there's no happier life than to live with the Lord. He brings joy and peace that the world can't give. And thank God the world cannot take it away, no matter what comes our way. He is our comforter, our strength our healer, our provider. He's everything we'll ever need. So I hope that you all know him, and if you don't, he's knocking at your heart's door today. He wants you to ask him in because he loves, he loves us all. He loves you. And so I hope you all have a wonderful week, and God bless you. And thank yeah, you. Absolutely. <laughs> Great to have you with us this morning. Will you pray over us before you go? Oh, thank if you. Don't you don't mind? I will. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the privilege of coming into your presence. And we come in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for your precious Son who spilled his blood for us that we might have peace with you. Thank you for the peace that we have all because of you, Lord. We love you. Lord, I ask you to be with all of our agents today. Protect them as they travel. Watch over them as they go in each home and keep them safe. May they find favor wherever they go. Protect them and bless them. May they have a great week this week, I pray, in the name of Jesus. And thank you, Lord, for your love for us all. Amen. Amen. Good deal. Great to have you here, Miss Carolyn, uh, my Aunt Carolyn. <laughs> you know, actually, I'll say this before you leave out of here. Uh, we know that you can tell someone's a Christian by their fruits and by the fruits that they bear. And Scripture gives us the fruits of the Spirit. And just thinking about them, if you think about love, joy, peace, patience, meekness, gentleness, temperance, as you go through the fruits of the Spirit, probably... Somebody that matches up as many of those as anybody that I know is my Aunt Carolyn. So uh, she's certainly, hey, if there's any, any nuggets you get out of this call today, maybe you go back and listen to the, to the uh, devotion here this morning. I probably will this morning. So thank you for being thank here with you. us, Aunt Carolyn. Thank Love you, you very much. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we'll lead right into that. And what a terrific way, of course, to uh, start our call. We'll give you a couple of updates on One Life. And I'm going to make a quick... Uh, 
quick adjustment here. I, I had to make a quick adjustment to my phone. Last time I, I left it uh, just a certain way, and it actually hung up the phone on us. So we don't want that this morning. I, I know y'all don't want to wait a, a minute or two for us to get back. But anyway, uh, we'll get right to a couple updates for you. We've got a production update. Uh, I know a lot of you that get our emails uh, have seen this already, but we want to give a quick update for those of you that maybe aren't on our emails. Uh, first of all, we'll start with One Life as an agency. I believe we had a lot of agents out on some trips and things this week. It was the week of 411 through 415. Would that be right, Ron? You believe it? Was that the Forrester's trip? Uh, no, week? Forrester's was the week prior. Week before? Okay. Well, um, I believe we did have some folks out, but we had a little little bit of a low week, and that's okay. You have peaks and valleys in sales. We did 755. Uh, that's 755,000, just short of 756 uh, in agency total production. Uh, we'll go right into team reports. Uh, of course, one of the, uh, I guess, core values of One Life is, is teamwork. So we'll go to the teams and see what groups are doing the, the best in fostering teamwork. Starting with number five, we've got Lead Masters Insurance. They wrote $43,984 of annualized premium for the week of 411 through 415. And then uh, at number four, proud to announce this guy on the, on the list this week, Mr. David Bowles, and actually one of his uh, managers that has partnered with him and done an excellent job as they've, they've uh, continued to grow uh, the local group here in Meridian. Uh, we've got Ron, Ron Reed, and we'll introduce him in a minute. But uh, my dad, David Bowles, they came in at number four on the list as far as teams with 47,334. Number three on the list, United Senior Brokerage with $56,829 of submitted AP. And then we've got a back and forth between Team 1 and Team 2 uh, this week at number 2, Innovative Insurance Brokers, with $110,552 of submitted annualized premium. Number 1 on the list, Team of the Week for 411 through 415, Life Management Group with $156,786 of submitted annualized premium. Excellent job by those guys. And now to the agents of the week. You always love to hear your name called on this list. If you if you do, it's almost a double whammy. You know you're going to have a big deposit coming to your bank account. Plus also, uh, it's nice to hear your name called and, and uh, be, uh, I guess, kind of not necessarily rewarded, but be recognized for having an excellent week. And yet again, get to call this guy's name, Mr. David Bowles, my father. Excellent job. With $5,863 at number 10 on the list. Moving to number 9, Andrew Wesley, $6,403 AP. Number 8, Keith Real, $6,597, just short of uh, $6,600 for the week. Number 7, Spencer Long, $6,880, submitted annualized premium. Number 6 on the list, Robert Hotchman, $7,694. Number 5, the top half of the list, leading off, Ryan York, 8,337 out of California, Kevin McGill, 8,354. Number three, uh, Tariq Lachine, $8,978, submitted annualized premium. Number two, we've got the reigning agent of the year four times in a row, Steve Thornton out of the South region, $9,716 submitted annualized premium. Number one on the list, at least the first time since I've been here, it's a brand new number one for me. We'll say at least maybe he's done better before uh, or been agent of the week before. But number one on the list for this week, agent of the week, a big congratulations goes out to Ryan Reynolds out of Arizona with $10,666 of submitted annualized premium. That's going to lead us right into an agent, uh, excuse me, an update, a marketing update, if you will. A lot of you know about this time next week. We'll be kicking off a couple of events here in the area. Number one, we've got uh, the Academy. We also have the Leadership Summit. It's going to be here in a matter of days. So any of you agents and managers uh, that plan to attend either event but haven't registered yet, make sure you do so as soon as possible. We really need you to do that. OneLifeAmerica.com. You can register there under the New Agent Academy tab. So go to the website, New Agent Academy. Click there. You can register for both. Uh, Make sure you do that as soon as possible. Also, we encourage you to connect with us. uh, Connect with One Life by social media. You can connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn, respectively. Have shortcuts for each. 
And look at the top right corner on the first page of OneLifeAmerica.com to do that. We'll move right along. i uh, got a little introduction for this man sitting beside me here. Uh, he may be embarrassed. He probably wouldn't want me to do it, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, he has an excellent track record with us. And so, yeah, you want to honor the people that uh, that that do so well with your organization, and, and certainly this individual has done that. We'd like to welcome Ron Reed to the call. Ron's been with One Life for a little over 10 years. Is that right, Ron? That's correct. Uh, he helps manage one of the most rapidly growing groups in our organization. Uh, also, for six years straight, Ron has qualified for either our presidents or leaders clubs. Last year, he wrote just shy of 200000 worth of annual volume. Yet, listen to this, he still found a way to be one of the top agents in not only our company, but all of Forrester's life or business quality. Uh, to sum it up, the soles of this man's shoes are probably worn down from walking across the stage so much at our annual awards banquets. Uh, he's always there. There's no doubt about it, and consistency is certainly one of his strong points. Finally, Ron is not only a stellar agent, he's also generally regarded as an overall nice guy. It's great to have Ron Reed on the call with us this morning. Ron? Thanks, Jim. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think, I don't, I don't know where you found all that information, but I think you got me mixed up with somebody else. Um, you know, first off, well, let me put this phone on silent, but um, I, I'd like to uh, go back and reference something Miss Carolyn said. When he tells you to go left and he tells you to go right, or if he tells you to stop doing what you're doing, we mm -hmm. all need to do that. That's right. We need to uh, listen to the Holy Spirit as he guides us. I know I struggle with that sometimes. I'm sure we all do, but thank you for Jesus. We are able to uh, just, just listen to him when he tells you to go out. Absolutely. Um Thank you for having me here this morning, Jeff, and um, I thought we might take this time to uh, go over a few things that have helped with my success and, and many other success uh, in this business and uh, try to highlight uh, maybe some training aspects and absolutely try to take away a little substance from the call. Um, the first thing I'd like to touch on is planning. Um, and everybody hears this and everybody says it, but we, you can't stress the importance enough. You've got to develop a plan and work that plan. Um, you know, it's critical here in, in our group, our, our plan is this. On Fridays, we begin to plan. We wrap up for the current week and we plan for the, for the next week. Um, on Fridays, we always look at leads and order leads on Friday. Then we enjoy our weekend, and we come back on Monday with a plan. Throughout the weekend, we know what our plan is for the following week. On Monday, we're here calling, scheduling appointments. Um, normally, we get to partake in, and enjoy some of these conference calls, but a lot of times we're calling, scheduling appointments during them, um, and we have, we're able to enjoy them on YouTube later. But we've got to develop a plan and work that plan. So we order leads on Friday to plan for the following week and close up the current week. On Monday mornings, we're calling, scheduling appointments for Tuesday. On Tuesday, we go and run those appointments. Typically, schedule six to eight appointments, minimum six, probably not more than eight or ten, depending on your drive. Uh, go to where you're working, get ready, set, run your appointments on Tuesday, get in the hotel, uh, get on the cell phone, call and schedule eight to ten appointments for Wednesday and then run those appointments on Wednesday from morning, whatever. If they want to see you at 9 o'clock at night, go see them. Um, you know, don't leave, uh, as one of our guys says, no lead left behind. Don't leave anybody behind, okay? Um, make sure you touch every lead. Call everybody. It, you know, if you have leads left, try to set more appointments for Thursday. Um, it, it's, it's all about developing a plan that works and working that plan. Um, so work through that week. Uh, that's our schedule. That's how we do it. Another thing that Jeff suggested that we would cover this morning is, is possibly some how to rebut some objections we may come into in a home. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll start, you know, when I, when I walk into a home, um, the first thing we do is show, I show, do is show them a lead card. This is how we got in touch with you. I want you to see this. Um, be it on your phone, your iPad, or hand them a piece of paper. Hey, here's how we got in touch with you. This is why we're here. You requested some information. Now, where do you want to sit down and go over this? 
So you sit down and we, and we start talking. We we find something in common. We we warm up to them, um, and then we you know go over the the cost and and what this could mean to their family if they didn't adequately plan. And um, once we've gone through the pitch and covered everything, the next thing before we go over numbers, we look at them and say, "Do you have any questions that I've not answered? Other than the cost, do you have any questions?" And, and normally that's where you might get a few objections, or you might get them along the way. But um, you know, Jeff and I, we're going to uh, go back and forth on yep. some. Jeff, you haven't you know given me much heads up, so I don't know <laughs> what we're going to be dealing with here. Sure. But um, you know, let, let's say we're sitting in a house and um, and um, we're going through the product, and and I've already asked them, is there anything other than the cost, or you know, that that any other questions you have that I've not covered yet? Well, Ron, at just for instance, if you want to, we, we can kind of just role play a little bit. You you go through a, a you know a typical close. Uh, what's probably one of the last things you do? If we want to just focus on maybe right at the very focus on the very end. Sure. Close. All right. Here we go. All right. Out of these three options, here's five thousand, ten thousand, fifteen thousand. Remember, this coverage never changes. That's not that number's not going to go down. This premium's never going to go up, mm. and it takes effect immediately. Right. Now, I can figure out any amount of coverage you want, mm -hmm. but out of these, which one works best for you? Uh, Ron, uh, you seem like a nice guy. I, I just can't afford it right now, I don't believe. And I understand how it is living on a fixed income. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the thing is, this is not going to get any better. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't have the money set aside, which mm -hmm. do you have ten or fifteen thousand put up? Is it laying in the top no, drawer? Or no, I definitely don't. Buried in a coffee can in the backyard? <laughs> well, I ain't got much. I tell you that. You can tell by this house here. Yeah, me either, and I understand that. But if something happens to you, somebody's going to have to mm -hmm. come up with that amount of money. You've got kids, right? I do. Do you want your kids to be in a financial strain? They probably don't have 10000 laying around either, do they? No. And we you don't. don't want them to have to figure out a way to come up with this. This is protecting your family, and it's a, it's a question of priorities. You have to figure out a way to make it work. Mm -hmm. You know, the older you get, the more expensive this gets. You've got to get something locked in now because it's only going to get worse as you get older. Right. So again, which one of these works best for you? And so you went right back to the close. It, it, that one thing that we talked about with Alan that I think is key is that with any rebuttal, with any with anything you do, it's almost like you you stop, you back up a little bit, and then you go around the objection, come back to where you just were, come back to the close every time. You close and you close and you close and you close. The average individual is going to say no mm -hmm. seven times before you get the yes. Yeah. Absolutely, um, and I know some people say, "Well, I never get, uh, I never get rebuttals." And you know, I, then you're doing a great job in your presentation. Sure, sure. And you know, even, objections. You never get sure. objections or rebuttals. Well, never get get objections. Okay, yeah. Then you're doing a great job. Keep well, up the good work. Yeah, absolutely. I, hey, they must be doing something. Can we can we get them? They're, we need them on the call next week. Hey, they're unicorns. They're so <laughs> rare. We need to trap them somewhere and see if we can't duplicate them. Okay, but. Uh, but maybe maybe they do exist. Maybe there are agents that actually don't get any objections. But I, I think that most of the time you do. I will say this though, to that point that there that a lot of agents will make, and uh, certainly agents would never be one to exaggerate. You don't believe that, do you? I've never exaggerated <laughs> not a day in my life. Jeff. Well, uh, you know it is true though, and it's not cloudy outside. Be glad. <laughs> it is true though that you can reduce the objections that you get by doing a, a better, uh, a more solid pitch as you go along. You kind of, I think with experience, and tell me if you, if you don't agree, with experience, you've had so many objections, you start trying to head them off before you ever get there. Absolutely. Uh, so That's mindful. the smartest thing to do is to cover it in your presentation. You know, you, you've, gone, you've developed a plan. You're working your plan. You've scheduled appointments. Now you're in front of this person. During your presentation, mm -hmm. you want to you know what all the common objections are in final expense. Right. I can't afford it. Um, you know, you, tell me a few more. I want to think about it. Yeah, got to think about it. Got to talk to my kids. These are all common objections. We're going to hear 
time and time again. Mm-hmm. And the best way to avoid and overcome those objections is before they become an objection. Right. During the presentation, cover your objections before they become a problem. Beat them to the punch. Absolutely. So you, you get there before they do. Um, now, with the, with the I can't afford it, just a simple example, if you're talking about preparation and learning how to get around it, certainly you're, you still are going to receive some of these objections. And we can kind of quickly go through some of them. But on the I can't afford it, uh, certainly, once you build the need, you you almost make it a situation where they can't afford not, not to. to take insurance. Absolutely, you can't afford not to. And certainly, we I can tell you this uh, here, working in the marketing department, we only mail people under a certain threshold of income. And when you go to the house, you can pretty well tell a lot of these individuals they don't have ten to fifteen, twenty thousand dollars set aside. Just like the very first question you asked me. When you dealt with that objection, went to the rebuttal, it's, ma'am, do you have ten to $15,000 laying around for this? Most of them don't. Uh, so we'll go with a few more of them, and just quickly, if you have a thought on, on them, we can, we can do that. I want to think about it. What, what, do you, what do you do with that one? There, there's a lot of things to consider when you're planning your final expenses, Jeff. Um, and, and you do need to think about it. You need to make sure it's a wise decision. Um, Thinking is something that takes place instantaneously. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it, you have thoughts, they happen just like that. So it doesn't take time to think about it. Mm-hmm. Um, with that said, um, there's a lot of things to consider. You want to make sure that you're getting the best product for your needs. Mm-hmm. So, Jeff, I'm a broker, I don't work for an insurance company. It's not important to me what company you get a policy with. But as far as thinking about it, you you correct me if I'm wrong, but Jeff, you're wanting to make sure that you're getting the best company for you. Is that what you're wanting to think about? Yeah. Okay, great. So as a broker, I shop around all the companies that are approved and available. Mm -hmm. I'm not limited to one company. So we're going to shop around, and I'm going to do that for you. You Mm -hmm. don't have to rely on your own. Do you have a computer, Jeff? um, My my daughter does. So it's tough to do research. Mm-hmm. So leave that to us. That's why I have an insurance yeah. license, and I have multiple options. It doesn't matter to me what company you go with or what we select for you. I'm going to shop around and find the mm-hmm. product that is best for you. So there's really not anything to think about. Right. Now, which one of these works best for you? Back to the close. And I like what you did there with I want to think about it. It's almost one where there's an objection, but they're not going to quite right. tell you. Yeah. They don't They don't exactly want to tell you. And when you go see clients, they don't realize that you hear these things every day. They think, they. some of them even think maybe I'm the first one to, uh, to say this almost. You can see the eyes roll back in the head a little bit, and they're thinking to themselves. That's usually when, uh, you know, somebody in sales, there's a, there's a meter that goes off going, whoa, 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 ding, ding, ding. I'm, get, I'm about to get something. And you know how to handle it. Sometimes you can get around it, sometimes you can't. An experienced agent, probably one of the most important things with dealing with rebuttals and and that type thing, is making them feel comfortable. While you said it there, you had confidence, and you made me feel comfortable. And so, you know, eventually, you know, a lot of times you can get around those. A couple of more, uh, you hit on this one, actually. I'm just shopping and comparing plans right now. You mentioned that you did that for me. That's a lot of things. You know, a lot of it, it goes back to cover your objections before they become one. Right, right. So you meant you got to that one already. That's a little bit of the last one you did. Somebody says, Ron, you know, th- this is great and all, but uh, I hadn't told you this, but I already have insurance. You know, that's great. I'm glad you do. You're ahead of the game. That's smart. You've made wise decisions, mm-hmm. and I'm glad to hear that. Not everybody does. Mm-hmm. But, Jeff, how much coverage do you have? You said you've got coverage, right? What do you have? Uh, it's a little small policy. I, let me get it here real quick. You want yeah, to see yeah, it? Yeah, let me take a quick look at okay. it. Okay. Uh, 
here it is. Okay, I, I, it looks like it may it says five thousand. Five thousand. Man, you you had your hand right on that policy. I'm telling you, normally most people have to dig for an hour to find theirs. Good job, Jeff. I keep up with my stuff. So you got about five thousand in coverage now, Jeff. Are you aware that the average funeral? You know what the average funeral costs this day and time, Jeff? Oh uh, well, ten years ago when Mama died, we paid about five thousand. Yeah, that's right. Now over the last ten years, funerals have actually doubled in. It's ridiculous, but they've doubled in cost. Really? Yes. And, and, again, I think it's, you know, that's not up to me, but it's ridiculous mm-hmm. how much they've gone up. But they have doubled in price. The average funeral right now, Jeff, costs about $10,000. Mm. So, you know, other than that, this $5,000 policy we're looking at here, um, do you have any other coverage? That's about it. Okay. Yeah. Well, Jeff, based off what we talked about earlier you know i covered the cost of funerals being between eight and twelve thousand dollars you heard me mention that Mm -hmm. you're going to need at least another five thousand possibly more you know i'm glad you've got coverage yeah but it's great to have extra because funerals have been on the rise and if they continue to do what they did over the last 10 years you're going to need to add you're going to need to triple what you've got now Wow. You're going to need close to $15,000 by the time you reach the life expectancy. All right, let's do that 10000 Okay. Now, now every Jeff, now and again, keep in I... mind, <laughs> Jeff, keep in mind that you're going to do the 10 to add to the 5. It mm-hmm. doesn't hurt to have a little extra coverage. I don't want you to get more <laughs> than you can afford, Yeah. but your kids, I'm sure, would appreciate it even if you left them an extra 100 If somebody walked up to, to me today and handed me $100, I would smile. If one of your kids got an extra $1,000, man, it would make them happy. If you think you can handle it, I would go ahead and do the 15. You think you can make that work? Yeah, let's go with that. Okay. I think that's a wise decision. That'll be fine. And see, that's that's one end of the spectrum. That's somebody that, that uh, or we went through a few. We went mm-hmm. through with uh, somebody that wants to think about it. They're apprehensive. They're, mm-hmm. They don't have money set aside, as we mentioned. Then we went to somebody that had a little bit of insurance. Uh, but now let's go to the other side, somebody that's, that's maybe a little more responsible on that end of the spectrum. I've got enough money in the bank or I've already, uh, you know, I've already got my burial paid for. They've been, they've been really responsible. But, Ron, there's one thing here. I did send you a lead card. And, and so I don't know if that might be where you took it, but, uh, but when somebody comes and says, Ron, you know, I appreciate all this, but I've got money in the bank to cover it. Man, that's great, Jeff. I could tell when I pulled up here that you'd been truly blessed, and that's wonderful. I'm glad to see that. It's nice to see someone that has been a success and truly blessed. Um, Now, Jeff, here's something I want you to think about, though. If something were to happen to you and you were to go into a nursing home and unexpected expenses came up, hospital, medical bills, they can add up really quickly, right, Jeff? Yeah, yeah. So if something like that were to happen and you had to liquidate your assets and use them, Mm -hmm. having a policy, a final expense policy set aside, it can't be touched. It can't be taxed. Nobody can touch this benefit. If something happened and you outlived your assets, because that happens all the time, Jeff. If -hmm. something happened and you got sick and your family had to use your money, um, that you've saved and you've been blessed, if that happened, having this policy set aside as a safety net would do mm-hmm. nothing but help protect against that. Right. Also, even if you didn't, this policy could just be extra set aside, left behind for your family. Right. So, again, it doesn't hurt to have extra. How much extra would you like for me to set up for you? <laughs> and I'll play the role of the wife here. A lot of times when you do something like that, Women want security. I mean, I'm not, I hate to overgeneralize, but generally speaking, in the marketplace we deal with, the women want the security sure. there. Um, and so with that being the case, you know, she may say, she may pop in at some point. Now, a lot of times you'll have a husband and wife, and you think you're pitching one and they're going to be the buyer. The other person chimes in and says, we're doing it. Or absolutely, you sell them and they just... They over they always, overrule the other. Always engage if you have a, spy, a husband and wife. Always engage both, regardless of who you think the decision maker is. And so, with with that type of thing, she may think, "Man, what if 
What if something did happen and we needed that ten thousand we've got in that account, Jeff? You know, so you go from there. Now we'll save the best for last. We've got two of probably our most common objections here. The final two we'll go with. Uh, I need Ron. I you make a good presentation and I I may do this. Tell you what, some will even say I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do this. I will take I'm gonna take some insurance and I'm gonna take it from you, Ron. But uh, Need to talk to my family about it. Well, Jeff, I don't, you know, taking out insurance is a big decision, and it's something you need to make sure is you need somebody that can help you make a wise decision. Which one of your family members has an insurance license as a licensed agent? <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know that any of them are. <laughs> okay. Well, Jeff, but my daughter helps me with with my bills. That's good. I'm glad. I'm glad you've got a lot of people that are your age that are living on a fixed income. They don't have anybody to help them. Be thankful you do. Mm -hmm. But you need to rely on an insurance agent that's licensed by the state that you live in to help you with your insurance decisions. Mm -hmm. We have to go through a rigorous process to get a license and to be approved by the state. That's why we that's why you want to rely on an insurance agent to help you. Mm -hmm. Now, asking your family is great, but let me ask you this. If I walked up to your daughter today and I handed her a thousand dollars, do you think she'd call you and say, Hey Jeff, hey Dad, do I have, can can I can I, there's a guy here wanting to give me a thousand dollars. Can I take it? I don't think I would. You don't think she'd call you and ask you for permission, <laughs> do you? No. I don't think okay. So. <laughs> then, you know, your insurance is kind of the same way. I'm an insurance agent. I'm here to help you make a wise decision. I'm here to advise you. And I don't think you're, anybody's going to ask permission to mm -hmm. take that money that you're trying to leave behind to them. Yeah. And uh, let me ask you this. I, I know sometimes it may vary when you're setting the appointment, but uh, a lot of times and, you want to isolate the decision maker being yeah. there if you can. And, and right? typically, yes, you do want to you you want to you want to cover that in your appointment setting. If you can. Uh, you want to make sure that you have the decision maker there. But typically, these objections we've covered, and, mm -hmm. and I, I know we're starting to run over on time, um, and I, I don't want to take too much up. But typically, um, when somebody presents an objection. It's not the real reason. Yeah. You know, there's there's a non they're just trying to come up with an excuse so that they don't have to sign their name right now. And with experience, you start to gauge when those objections are sure. legitimate. Yeah. And when they are when they are you spend more time on them. Sure. When they're not, you just hit you just hit it with a quick rebuttal and then go right back to the close. Yeah. And and there there does come a point with with every sale where You've dealt with so many objections, and you can tell they're not really going to tell you the real reason, sure. or they're just not going to buy. Absolutely. And the best thing you can do at that point sometimes just is to move your on. Cut losses and move on to the next Go one. to the next Don't time. spend too much time on somebody that is, no matter what you say or do, not going to commit. Yeah. If they give you all eight of these uh, objections, you're probably wasting your time. Typically, <laughs> all if eight. you've had to cover all eight of these in one house, that's a you're never going to get to the bottom line. Good sign that, that, yeah. you're, that you're not at the right place. That's right. All right. Let's do the last one, and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, this one's a big one. Ron, I don't let, you know, how are we, gonna, how are we setting this up again? Because I don't let anybody into my checking account. Well, now, your payments are going to be made automatically. It's the safest way. Um, let me ask you a question. If you had a $100 bill, right now in your pocket well here if i were to hand you this hundred dollars if you wanted to put it in a safe place in the safest place of all if you had two options one option was your mailman that comes by and delivers your mail every day the other option is your bank the banker down there at the bank the teller would you take that hundred dollars and go down to the teller and hand it to them or would you hand it to your mailman to hold on to for you well, I, I keep my money in the bank now. Absolutely, everybody <laughs> does. So, so Jeff, the safest place for your money is the bank. These payments are made automatically. This isn't your phone bill. This isn't your satellite service. The amount, like I told you, is never going to change. And whatever day of the month works best for you, the first or the third, when do you get your check? Uh, the third. The third, okay. On the third of the month, 
starting the third. You don't even have to do it today, but the third of next month is when your first payment will be mm -hmm. due, and it's all made automatically for you. Now, who was your beneficiary again? Right back to the close. <laughs> who did you want me to send this money out to? Right. Who's going to receive this benefit? And there, there's numerous ways to overcome that objection. This is not a, you know, a lot of people say, well, I'm not going to do a draft. Okay, well, this isn't a draft. It's a pre-authorized check. Right. You know, it's just a different way of describing it. And I've had people look at me, I ain't doing a draft. Okay, well, this is not a draft. It's a, it's a PAC, pre-authorized check. You know, which day of the month do you get your check on? The third? Okay, right. again, this is a PAC. You can cancel the PAC. It, it's a lot easier to, to adjust and change than a draft. So, but it's called a pre-authorized check. Every month, the bank's the the insurance company is going to submit a request to your bank, and your bank's going to pay it for you automatically through your account. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now, who did you want me to send this money to? And they're okay with it. Yeah. It's just Absolutely. all in how you phrase it. But this is one of the most common objections Absolutely. that we have to overcome. Do you have any final thoughts before we wrap up? You know, um, I hope everyone's out there calling, scheduling, setting appointments today, and they've got a plan, and they're going to work the plan. And I hope everybody goes out and has a huge week, and I hope there's at least one takeaway for everybody listening today. Yeah. Have a great week. Absolutely. Well, guys, we'll, uh, we'll go quickly to, to wrap up the call. Uh, we're running just a little bit long. Uh, you know what? If you got just one quick minute, we're actually doing okay with time. We may give you guys an opportunity to, uh, to chime in and ask a question. You can do that by unmuting your line, by pressing star six, just a, a quick question if you have one. Star six, we'll give you a quick moment to ask a question of, uh, of Ron Reed this morning. Don't see anybody just this second. Well, you know, just like in uh, in setting your appointments, that usually means that you covered all the bases, I believe. <laughs> so with that being the case, uh, maybe we covered all the bases and we uh, eliminated the objections before they uh, we got to them. You guys, uh, I wanted to have just a closing thought. We're talking about closing uh, today, and I wanted to do something on finishing strong. You know, in order to truly finish with excellence, everything we do should be setting us up to finish that way. And Ron and I mentioned that. I want to use a scripture here. Hebrews 12.1 says, Throw off everything that hinders and run with endurance the race marked out for us. And so the way you finish is always dependent on the way you start and the way you run the race throughout. Uh, so the way you run determines how you finish. So this week, let's set ourselves up for success. Let's keep our eyes on the prize, on yeah. our goals, on what, where, we're, where we're headed, where we're ultimately going. Uh, then I think we'll be satisfied with how we finish. That said, let's have a great week. And as Ron said, uh, let's uh, have all the success. Let's try to reach those goals. Let's finish and finish strong. God bless you all. We'll see you here next week.